Hi, sweet friends. Welcome back. Today, we are decorating for Christmas here in our living room. If you are new, hi, my name is Amy and welcome. Now, I've already kicked off my Christmas decorating series. We decorated our coffee bar as well as finished up over in our kitchen. So I'll go ahead and have those videos linked down below as well as my entire playlist of Christmas decor shop with me's. If you do enjoy today's video, I'd appreciate a big thumbs up and don't forget to hit that subscribe button. If you haven't already, I would love to have you back as I continue to decorate the rest of our home for Christmas this year. All right, well, we have lots to get done, friends, so let's go ahead and do some Christmas decorating. I hope you enjoy. Here is our living room and how we are starting out today. Of course, I've removed all of my existing decor, cleaned all of the surfaces, and have a bare canvas to start decorating. I'm super excited to transform this blank slate into a cozy Christmas oasis for us to enjoy all season long. On this wall behind our love seat, I want to hang a gorgeous new print from Kirkland's. Now I've already measured and marked the center of the wall and also measured up from the floor 60 inches and this will mark the center of the artwork. To hang this large print, I'm using these Velcro 3M command strips so that I'm not adding any extra unnecessary holes to the wall, which I know my hubby Scott will appreciate. The canvas artwork is actually pretty light, but I'm going overboard, as you'll see, by adding seven different command strips just to make sure that it's nice and secure once it's placed on the wall. Next to the painting in this corner, I have a black blanket ladder and I like to change out my throws seasonally. So I'm bringing in this dark green one. This helps to bring out a little bit more green in the artwork. And then I like the look of just casually draping it over the top rung. And then I'll add a subtle touch of Christmas with this fun gold bell garland, which I'll also be using again in this room. Repeating a decor element at least three times is a designer tip that helps achieve a cohesive look. To our corner end table, I'm going to add a grouping of three, which is typically more pleasing to the eye. I'm adding a simple pine tree, and to dress it up just a bit, I'm adding it inside a hammered copper crock. And then I'll add a black deer and a mistletoe woods candle that was from Kirkland's last year. To the mirror, I'm going to be adding this gorgeous garland that I picked up from TJ Maxx. I love that it is a very soft, that kind of real touch pine that everyone is raving about. I also love that it's nice and flexible and soft, so it just nicely drapes over the mirror without any hooks or anything. All I'm doing is sliding a few of the pine branches behind the mirror to make it nice and secure, and then finishing up with a little fluffing. If you're like me, you have many different garlands that you've collected throughout the years from different stores. And so to coordinate them all, I like to add a festive bow. So this year I'm using the vintage khaki velvet ribbon from Amazon to add bows to many of the garlands throughout my decor. I'm using some green floral wire that I strung through the knot on the back of the bow to attach the bows to the garland. To the bronze candle sconces, I'm adding these green glass candle bulbs that I got from Target last year. Now I get asked a lot where the sconces are from, but unfortunately I can't give you a link to them because they are from Southern Living in a Home. I used to be a consultant with them and so I have many of their pieces. To style the top of the console, I love the look of layering. So first I'm bringing in this wall decor piece that was from Walmart last year. I love the musical piece and that it looks like it's printed on antique paper that has been 
painted with some evergreen. Next, I'll bring in this angular bowl, and then I'm adding some potpourri that came from Michael's this year. It smells so good. It has a pine scent that's very light, and I love the mixture. It has pine, pine cones, walnuts, cinnamon sticks, and even little gold spheres and green ornaments. In addition to all of that, I'm still going to bring in a pop of red with the red flocked ornaments that are also from Michael's. Finally, to fill in the empty space and to add a little bit of texture and interest, I'm bringing in this candle holder and three tapered candles from Big Lots that look like mini pine trees. To the bottom of the console, I like to keep this basket as well as the black trunk under there seasonally, but to dress it up for Christmas, I'm going to place a small pine tree once again. To take it up a notch, I'm placing it in a small copper canister. Then I'll bring in a small tray, topping it with some sweet little bells that I put together from those Hobby Lobby bell picks and pine. Now to the basket, I'm adding this cozy cable knit blanket from Michaels, a pillow from Kirkland's last year to bring in a pop of red, and a sweet little garland to drape over the edge from Hobby Lobby. Swinging over to the opposite side of the room, I want to hang this gorgeous Norfolk pine wreath from Kirkland's on the wall arch that is above the sofa. I love that it comes pre-lit, but I really wish it had a remote. Nevertheless, to hang it, I'm going to use these S-hooks to attach it to the wall arch. Then to finish it up, I'm adding a velvet ribbon. During the winter here in West Virginia, it gets pretty chilly in the evenings. And so I love to have a plethora of cozy blankets scattered throughout the room. So everyone can easily grab one, get cozy and warm, and snuggle up on the sofas as we watched Christmas movies together. As far as the coffee table decor goes, I'm first bringing in a vase that I actually thrifted and did a DIY aged technique to. Plus I'm bringing in some florals that I believe that I got a couple years back from the Target dollar spot. But I actually really love them because they have just a little pop of a red in a frosted berry, which I absolutely love. Next, I'm coming in with this really fun Christmas coffee table book, which I did want to mention. I will try to link everything that I can down in the description box today, just in case you're interested. Then to the top of the book, I'm adding a gorgeous green glass candle from the Hearth and Hand line, a candle snuffer, and a wooden tree. In the quiet evening, snow is falling, and from every window shine. To balance it out on the opposite side and to add just a sense of fun and the nature inspired decor, I'm bringing in these adorable deer that were from Walmart this year. Christmas. 
Making our way over to this side of the room, I'll be adding a couple of pine picks to the top of our vintage style clock. As I walk through the streets of my old hometown, I hear slaves. To the top of the cabinet, I'll be adding a similar style vessel that I also DIY'd to match the one that I styled over on our coffee table. For a fun Christmas arrangement, we'll be adding these stems that are from Hobby Lobby. Next, I'll use these faux branches from Amazon, and then I'll also be using some of those same berry picks that I used over on our coffee table. Unfortunately, these first stems I can't recommend. They are from Hobby Lobby. I like that they look a little bit branchy, and they also have some pine cones on them, but they fall apart so easily, and I really think you can get better quality elsewhere. Next, I'm coming in with two coffee table books that will elevate one of my favorite decor pieces that I purchased this year, and that is The Bells from Kirkland's. I think these are absolutely gorgeous. I love the ceramic look of them. They look a little bit aged. All I can say is, wow, I'm in love. I'll also add this brown glass tree that will add a little bit of height and balance the arrangement on the opposite side, but it's also reflective so it really draws your eye because it is glass. Finally, to finish it up, I'll add just a little bit more pine picks to just give a little Christmas touch on this side as well. Christmas, oh Christmas. The wall above the armchair already has three nail holes available, so I'm going to hang these really cute wooden snowflakes that I think are a dupe for the one sold at Pottery Barn for a fraction of the cost. I went ahead and installed a picture hanger instead of using the twine to hang them. I think this gives it a little bit more clean, modern look. Next to the armchair, I have this sweet little accent table that was from Decor Steels. And I'm going to create just a cute little arrangement. So first I'm coming in with this marble tray that came from Target. Then I'm going to add a wreath. Next I'll come in with a black light up ceramic house. And then to top it all off, I'm adding a cloche. Now this, I think, is a super adorable arrangement. It could be used on a coffee table, an entryway table, really anywhere you would want a cute little accent for Christmas. We are moving and grooving right along. And so now it is time for the mantle. And I love decorating this space, especially for Christmas. Now, since we do have a TV up here, I always like to search YouTube and choose a winter wall art scene. This is the one that I chose, but there are several out there that would fit your style and individual theme. Also, you'll see here that I've gone ahead and attached three command hooks that we'll use to secure the garland in place. So for our mantle, I am going to be doing some layering. So first I'm coming in with two of these gorgeous garlands that I purchased last year from Hobby Lobby. It is great quality. It has that real feel pine and also has some small branches in it that makes it look very realistic. I love that it is soft, so it's not going to scratch our mantle. Thank you. 
Next, I'm coming in with two Norfolk Garland from Kirkland's, the ones that everyone raves about. Now, this is new to me this year, and so I really do love the way it feels and that it gives that drapey look. So I'm going to put it just to the edge of our mantle, allowing the Hobby Lobby Garland to sit kind of on top and secure it. Next, I'm coming in with two types of fairy lights. Now, the first one is the typical 100 count LED strand of string lights, and I'm going all the way across and down the garland. Then I'll be coming in with these fairy lights that I found from Hobby Lobby. They look like teeny little frosted bulbs, and I'm just going to scatter them two sets on the garland that sits on top of the mantle. Also to the asymmetrical side, I'm going to add the antique looking bells that I found off of Amazon last year, plus a couple of velvet bows to tie in with the other bows going on in the room. I really love having this side really full because I think it balances the armchair that is on the opposite side. In years past, I usually wait to hang our stockings until a little later, but I thought I would go ahead and just get the whole look completed and finished. So I'm gonna hang four of our stockings, and I think they were from Studio McGee either last year or the year before. And to make them look a little bit more substantial, I'm going to fill them with some paper. I think that just makes them look a little bit better when they're hung. To finish up the mantle for this year, I'm adding two garlands. The first one is a wooden garland that I picked up from Walmart this year. But the weird thing is, when I tried to link it after my shop with me at Walmart, it was no longer available and they said it wasn't sold from Walmart anymore. So I don't know what is up with that, but that is where it was from. And then you're gonna see a second appearance of a gold bell garland from Hobby Lobby. After I took a step back, I did go ahead and tweak that bottom garland just a bit and snuck it behind the stockings. I thought that looked a little bit better. Now it is time to add all of the soft textiles, which in my opinion is what brings the room to life and gives it that cozy overall feeling. Now, like normal, I do not hold back in this department. I love to add lots of cozy pillows and throw blankets. So we'll go ahead and just place all of these on the chair, the love seat, and the sofa. You may also notice that I like to mix and match patterns and colors. And I don't like to have everything matchy matchy. I think that this gives our room a little bit more of a designer look when everything coordinates and doesn't match completely. The pillows that I'm using come from various places. A couple are from Target, one is from Kirkland's, and then I have lots of pillow covers that came from Amazon. Now, if you're looking for even more living room decorating inspiration for Christmas, I can go ahead and link last year's Christmas Decorate With Me in the living room. I always like to change it up just a bit, and you'll see this year I'm adding just a little bit more red, whereas I went real neutral last year.
after a quick lunch break, it's back to decorating and it's time to set up and decorate the Christmas tree. I'm using for the third year in a row, this Pulio International 7.5 foot slim Fraser fir artificial tree. It is pre-lit with 500 clear white bulbs. Now it comes in three sections. Now I know everyone likes to do this a little bit differently, but for me, I like to work with the bottom section first, get that all fluffed, then work my way up. I touch every single branch and work my way up in layers. Typically, I always like to glove up to protect my hands, but what I like to do is take each branch and fluff the branches outward, left and right, some up and down, crisscrossing some, and then those outer branches, I like to have a slight downward fall. This is a long and tedious process, but I think this is where you get a more realistic looking tree if you take your time. So for me, it took me about an hour to fluff and shape the tree. And if you are like me, this is kind of enjoyable and relaxing. So you have to let me know if you enjoy fluffing your tree or if you'd rather just kind of take it out of the box and go. Finally, she's all fluffed and ready to go. I like to start way at the top by adding the star first. Once it's in place, I like to fill in at the base of the star with small picks to create a starburst effect. This year, I'm going in with three different ones. The next step, if I'm adding ribbon, is to add it now. For this year, I'm taking some ribbon that I've used in the past. I took three different wired ribbons and secured them together at the top with some floral wire, and then cut various lengths anywhere from two feet to four feet sections. I take the ribbon to the tree and secure it with the floral wire, and then I bring the ribbon back in at sections, securing it with individual branches in the tree. Working with smaller sections is easier for me, and it still looks like the ribbon is woven throughout the tree. Now it's time to come in with larger picks, some of which are the same as what I used in the starburst effect, others are larger. I'm using three this year. And what I like to do is just scatter them throughout. And these picks are great for filling in any bare areas, making the tree look full and lush. You may notice I do a lot more decorating on the sides and front, leaving the back pretty sparse since no one really sees it. The last step for me is to scatter my favorite bulbs and ornaments and I like to use the ones with different reflective properties so that your eye is really drawn into the tree when the lights are turned on and they just are shimmering. I also like to use different colors and sizes of bulbs. A tip that I find useful when placing my ornaments is to place them in a diamond shape. 
throughout the entire tree. I like to have a smaller diamond shape at the top and have a bigger, wider diamond as I work my way down the tree. As we finish up the tree, these stained glass crosses, I think that I got at Macy's almost 20 years ago, are a staple for our living room tree. You'll also notice that I added another set of gold bells. So if you remember, I've repeated the use of gold bells three times within this room. All right, sweet friends. Well, that wraps up today's video. I hope that you enjoyed it and maybe got some new ideas for decorating your homes this Christmas. I've really had a blast today putting this look together and I hope that if you did enjoy it and haven't already, that you would hit that subscribe button and join me as I decorate the rest of our home. Now, if you did enjoy it, go ahead, give me a big thumbs up and maybe even share it over on your socials. I'd really appreciate it. Now, before we end our time together, you know how I always love to go to God's Word. So today we're going to be reading from Exodus chapter 15, verse 2. The Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. He is my God, and I will praise Him and my Father's God, and I will exalt Him. I thank you so much for joining me today. I love reading all of your sweet comments and I appreciate your support so much. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day and I hope to see you back next time for even more Christmas decorating still to come. Take care and God bless friends. Bye and Merry Christmas. <laughs>